So, good morning. Another unique problem here today, a 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 4x4. It's had a problem with the heater controls. They've been intermittently not working and then stuck on blowing high on cold. Now the customer has removed this fuse from the fuse panel, special fuses, in order to stop it so he wasn't driving around with cold air blowing. But he said that even with the fuse in, I believe he said that the climate control panel was dead. So we're going to reinstall the fuse and see what happens. So after installing the fuse, I heard the climate control system go through uh, like a relearn and modes changing. But the control head is dead. No response, no lights. And it's blowing cold air and no control over the fan speed. So we're going to hook the scanner up to it and scan it and see what codes we have. So I've never scanned this vehicle before. This is a new customer. So it automatically detected a new vehicle. 2014 Silverado. So let's do a network code scan to start with and see what hocus pocus we got going on. Low voltage in the anti lock brake control module. Lost communication with HVAC. Well, that would make sense if the fuse was missing or this HVAC module is dead. Universal serial bus circuit open. Just what I wanted was another network problem to deal with. HVAC, LIN bus 1, lost communication with device. Hmm. Control module power circuit voltage below, LIN bus 9, control module power circuit below, below, below voltage, lost communication with HVAC. Well, before we get carried away here, we're going to clear all the codes out of it because pulling the fuse would likely set some fault codes. And then we'll let it run for a few seconds and then rescan it and see what comes back. Just what I wanted today was another network problem. 18 controllers. I did talk with the HVAC. Hmm. All right. So let's read it again. So we got an HVAC code for the Lin bus one lost communication with device. Interesting thing is it still talks unless there's a separate module for the HVAC and the control head is separate. I'm not familiar with this system. I assume that the HVAC module was the control head itself but maybe the control head is Linbust. Alright so let's have a look at the troublemaker chart for these two codes. We're going to go into the HVAC control assembly and see if the voltage displays current there. Battery voltage, 4 volts. Well, that would probably do it. So I guess we're chasing this. So we'll pull up an electrical diagram for this truck. So I decided to do a keyword search for that B1325 in Identifix. And here is a case. Heater control panel is inoperative, blower motor does not run, while well, this one does run on high. Controls do display on the radio, has code B1325 in the heat vent air conditioning module. So let's have a look at this. Check voltage of the following fuses, 22, 26, 34 in the left hand fuse block. Check voltage on fuse 43 in the right hand fuse block. If OK, try a power reset, key off, battery cable removed, hold together for one minute. If above OK, try an HVAC module reprogram. So it appears to be a preliminary bulletin on this. Various HVAC bore mode issues. Some customers may front or rear HVAC controls inoperative or blink, does not light up or respond, stuck in an incorrect operating state. 
blows full cold air, delivery mode may not follow expect AC compressor and operative, AC compressor recirculation, dead battery. Any service codes. Reprogram the K33 HVAC control module with the updated calibration. Well, we're not going to reprogram it. We're going to fix that low voltage problem first, I believe. So let's check these fuses and see if we can find anything abnormal. So the fuse is in the uh, left panel, 22, 26, and 34, they all test good. And fuse 43 on the right bus panel tests good. So I'm going to have a look at the electrical diagram. So here's a look at the uh, HVAC schematics, or at least one of them. It shows fuse 26 and 22 feeding power to the HVAC control module. 26 feeds battery power and 22 feeds ignition power. And then from the right fuse 43 feeds the blower motor. Well, I don't think we got a problem with that because the blower motor is running on high right now. And the HVAC display module is, looks like it's Lin bus to network here. So we should find this HVAC module and check powers and grounds to it. G218 and grounded through the, oh that's for controlling the blower motor itself. I'm going to find out where the HVAC control module lives. So that's component K33, the HVAC control module in the passenger compartment in the, in the passenger side, the instrument panel behind the upper glove box mounted on the HVAC box. So we'll have a look at that. So there's the HVAC control module schematic. It shows two fuses, one battery and one ignition. And we're going to check it at connector two, which is right up here. I believe this one right here, but we're going to have to double check because I didn't identify the connectors. It just says connector 2, X2. So I'm assuming it will be the second one in from one end, and we'll judge it by the wire colors. Pin 1 is battery positive. Pin 8 is ground, and pin 9 is ignition. So I'm going to identify that and get a voltmeter out here and check that. So I dropped that module down from behind the blocks there, and I don't think this is the module. There's J2, or connector 2, and none of the wire colors match. And the other module showed four connectors, uh, all basically the same. I just printed off this one because it had the powers and grounds. The other ones were... So I don't think... This, this looks like it has something to do with the radio because it says antenna on it, but who knows how they network these things. And I don't see any other modules here. It said behind the, the dash, attached to the top of the HVAC, and that's not the top of the HVAC, and it's not. There's the airbag module, passenger airbag. I don't see it up there. Hmm, i got to get a better picture, I guess. So here's what I found, and this is what it says. It's called Heater and Air Conditioning Remote Control Replacement. I don't see that in there anywhere. Hmm. Well, I'll keep looking. So HVAC Component Replacement Reference. Automatic. Remote Heater an air conditioning control module, K33 HVAC control module, that's what it shows. And I don't see that in there. I'm going to go look again. Well, turns out there is another module way up inside here. You can barely see it. Let's see if I can get this to focus. You can see it in the center of the screen right now. It has a plastic clip over top of it that you have to pop out and then the module is supposed to come out of there. There's a plastic clip popped out. I don't know how I'm going to pop it back in again. 
but it says just to reach up there and remove it. I tried to remove this airbag, but it doesn't come out unless you take the top dash panel off, and I'd prefer to not do that. So I'm going to try and see if I can get that module out. Okay, so there's the module, and this one only has two connectors on it. Turns out this is manual climate control. It doesn't have the digital readouts on the dials. I assumed it was automatic, but it's not. If it's automatic, it has the temperature readings on the dials. Anyways, I had to remove the, the uh, other module that was in the way, and then this bracket. There are three small screws that hold the bracket, one up through here and two from underneath. Then you can take that plastic bracket out of the way. There's that retaining clip that holds the module in place. It just kind of snaps over it like that, like so. Now we got the module out. We can plug it in and back pin it now. Uh, I double checked the wiring diagram for the manual AC and this connector is the same. So the pins are the same. So we're going to connect it now and, and test it. So I'm back pinning pin one, which is battery positive, And it shows 12.45 volts on there. I got a battery charger on it. And I'm going to move down to pin nine which is this one here this one is key switch power and that also shows 12.48 and then the pin eight which is the ground one right beside it shows point zero three so the powers and grounds of this module seem to be fine. Which would theoretically mean it needs a module. I'm going to recheck the data parameters and see, because now I've cycled the connectors on this. I'm going to see if it's changed the voltage reading on, on the scan tool. Oh, look at that. The climate control panel has woken up now. Now, he said that it did work occasionally. Wait a sec. I got no voltage on this pin one now. Yeah, oh, I do have. But now the climate control panel has woken up again. And now it's gone to sleep. And I have voltage on pin one. Hmm, that's strange. I'm going to manipulate these terminals. So wiggling the terminals and tapping on the module didn't make any difference. I'm on pin 2 here, and pin 2 is GM Low Speed LAN. And that's the signal I've got on there, which doesn't look correct to me. If it's low speed, it's usually a 7 volt square wave. And then... Pin 4 is the linear interconnect, or LIN bus. Let's have a look and see what we got on pin 4. Pin 4 is right there. And I would imagine that's the... We got 8.9 volts. 8.7, 8.9, just went dead. Why is it still saying 8.9? Hmm. Well, it's acting like this module has died, but I'm not completely convinced. Well, it appears that that module is sending some kind of a LIN bus signal down that circuit, but it's still showing uh, just under 4 volts for battery voltage to this module, yet it's measuring 12 and a half. Hmm. Well, I'm going to see about the availability of this module. So the number on the unit is 13589539, and that changes up to 13591692. It's got to come out of the U.S. 7 to 10 business days, and it's $180 retail. Now, I'm not sure what 
the likelihood of a being able to plug in a used one is. It's very sketchy doing that because a lot of these modules are VIN specific on these global systems now and it can cause other problems down the road. Uh, gonna see if I'm going to look at the actual troubleshooting chart for that low voltage code and see if it suggests anything about the control head itself. So here's the troublemaker chart for B1325. It appears to be a generic code for low voltage at a module. So the, the, the test procedures, control module or sensor detects, detects a system voltage of less than the approximately 9 volts for 5 seconds. Basically, the troubleshooting has you test powers and grounds to the affected module, and they want you to qualify grounds by measuring resistance on the grounds, which I think is a very poor way of qualifying them. Measuring voltage, which I've done. Put a test light across powers and grounds, and if the test light lamps, replace the control module. Doesn't mention anything about the control head, but if that module is not waking up, I'm sure it's not going to communicate with the control head to wake it up. Hmm. Well, I'm going to see if I can get a previously enjoyed module. So there's the signal on the uh, pin 2. I switched to a lab scope so we could see it better. And it is a, what looks like a CAN bus signal, but it's much slower because I've only got the scope going at 5 milliseconds here. So we have network activity on the uh, system coming out of that module, but the module reads 4 volts, just under 4 volts all the time. According to the troublemaker chart, it says replace the module. Uh, I did uh, find, well, the use... Or, Parts recyclers are, are checking on the availability, and I'm not sure about whether or not this is going to be VIN specific or not, but I guess we're going to find out if they have a module. So I've got the HVAC module completely disconnected. There it is. And scan data shill still shows communication with it, and it still shows 3.9 volts on the module so I'm confused now look at that how is that possible is it actually coming from the control head itself how could we have data from this thing oh well still waiting for a call from the used parts place so I was actually in HVAC controls but there's HVAC assembly. So now when I go to HVAC, come on. And this says uh, manual AC. C67. Display codes. And I would expect to be no communication. I'm going to plug it back in. So now with the plug back in. We have a whole whack of codes because I had one of the connectors unplugged. Let's clear the codes. And display codes. No codes present. Oh, lost communication. So maybe we were chasing the wrong freaking module all this time. Let's look at the data. Sensor data, security data. System data. See if there's voltage in this. Battery voltage 12.1. All right, let's now focus on the control head. Damn. So there's not a lot to this control head. There's only four wires. So there's power ground and a LIN bus by the looks of it. I think that green wire was the LIN bus or the serial data wire, whatever. 
So we're going to check the voltage here now. I would imagine the red wire is power. Probably there's a key switch voltage one as well. So I'm back pinning this module, the red wire here. 12 volts, the black wire with a white tracer, 0, 0.04 volts, the green wire, we have network communication, 2.5 volt, this looks like almost like a, a low speed LAN, and then this one I believe is the LIN bus, and that signal is there as well. I'll point it down here at the lab scope so you can see it. So that's the LIN bus signal, and that is the serial data signal. There's my power coming in, 11.9, and there's my ground, 0 0.04. So now, I think we're going after this module now, not the, uh, not the HVAC module down here. This comes out pretty easy. This plastic trim just pops off, just clips, and then there's four retaining screws that hold the radio control head and everything in place. Looks like everything's fairly accessible behind here once you get in here. So I've got the module plugged in, and I'm reading data from it, and if I unplug the module, then the data stops transmitting. Notice the count, 626 count down here is not changing. Now we lost communication. So I think this control head is actually failed now. Oh my goodness sakes. So we managed to obtain a couple of, or a previously enjoyed heater control. There are few and far between. This is the original one here, 23168150 none in the country and GM can't give me an ETA on it this is the one I got came out of a 2015 Silverado same options but it's a different number this one's two three four eight six six two two so we're gonna plug it in and I don't know what the difference is it's they're both for uh, uh, manual AC single zone so we're gonna plug it in and see how it works or if it works so I think we figured out what the different part numbers mean. Blue, red. The gauges are red outlines, but I'm pretty sure that this was supposed to be highlighted in blue to match the radio display. So I think that's what the only difference is. It seems to function just fine. Your control displays up in there, the modes change. Let's start it up. You know, the rear defogger doesn't work unless it's running. Yeah, defrost works. AC. Engine's too cold for the compressor to kick in. Well, we'll do a network scan and see what, if anything, we have for codes. Okay. thought it was touch screen okay we're gonna do a network code scan and clear all the codes out of this thing I see the check engine light is flashing I thought it was running rough when I drove it in we never mentioned anything about that like I just started and drove it a hundred yards across the parking lot feels like it's got a miss. Oh well, we'll see what codes it's got. So I want to check and see what codes it generated in the engine control computer. I'm sure it was a misfire code because we've seen the check engine light flashing. Misfire detected. Lost communication. This is me unplugging stuff off the network, I'm sure. Let's see the, what the misfire counters show. Data. Misfire data. Cylinder 5, 2000. Cylinder 5 is showing a misfire right now. Huh. Well, we 
never complained about anything. In fact, I asked him yesterday if there was any other concerns that he had, and he said he didn't. And it ran fine yesterday when I drove it in, but now you can see it's misfiring on cylinder on number five. All right, well, let's have a look at the HVAC system. Automatic manual, C67, display codes. Okay, let's try clearing this code now, because this was in here before. Codes, yes. Display codes, good. Let's go into the HVAC controls now. Display codes. thought that would be gone. How could that be there? Well, that could have been there from low voltage in the previous vehicle, I suppose. Let's see if this shows. Yes, battery voltage, 15 volts. That was 3.9 volts. So, the Heating ventilation system seems to be fine, but we have another problem that has uh, arisen now. It just doesn't want to leave. Maybe I'll take it for a road test. Maybe a plug fall just by starting and shutting it off and starting it and shutting it off. No, it's got a dead miss on cylinder number five. So I'm under the hood here and I can hear a spark jumping. One three five. That's this cylinder right here. The plug wire is off. How is that freaking possible? So the plug plug wire was just laying there. It's been it's been off for a while. This is oxidized. Huh? I guess this plastic cover has to come off. This cosmetic trim that GM's decided they needed. Well, we'll get two hands here. Well, I don't see any reason for it to come off other than it's off. That's weird. Now I'll put some dielectric grease on and plug it back in. Well, it's kind of amazing how much better it runs with eight spark plug wires on. Well, we'll clear that code. In fact, we'll do a network code clear and put everything back together. I'll do that after I put everything together because I have to disconnect that module under the dash to install it.